The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. You're listening to the Roaring Peacock Match Review. My name's Adonis, you know me from the Adelites. With me is Ross from the Man on the Post pod. Hello, sir. And Alex from uh, the small faces that you see on Twitter. Wait a minute, I'm in the small faces now. Wouldn't it be nice? (laughs) And we are reviewing the Leeds United versus Fulham game, which ended 4-3, which is a scoreline that you don't see very often, is it? I know, we've not seen this before this season at all, no. <laughs> it's the new norm, boys. So yeah. Bielsa Ball is back and it's uh, blockbuster entertainment, which is, I've seen a few people describe it as that. Uh, that box office, this Leeds United. I'd, I'd rather just not be box office and just win everything 1-0, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> I felt um, relatively calm about this. Even when it got back to 4-3, I was just like, oh well, it's 4-3. You're it's a better fun. man than me. I was not <laughs> calm in the slightest. You mainlining the last... Dopazamam or something. <laughs> <laughs> the last couple of seasons, I've got so stressed about football and we're finally back in the Premier League now. And I just think, well, it's fun, isn't it? If we can score four goals every week, three or four goals every week, then yeah, who cares about defending? Let's just keep scoring. <laughs> it is basically Simon Grayson has returned yeah. in an Argentinian skin. <laughs> we'll just score one more than you. Yeah, I love it. We're the new entertainers. Well, I was very worried at 4-3, I tell you. <laughs> very worried indeed. <laughs> when they hit the post as well. Yeah, we need. We need. I thought that was a save when I first saw it, but we need to be winning games like that. We need to be beating Fulham anyway, but especially when we're 4-1 up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Flashbacks of Cardiff. Well, yeah, I don't want to rip stuff off straight from the square ball match ball, but Michael said on there that last season it felt imperative that we beat Fulham. It felt like there was so much stress behind it that we had to win. I, I didn't feel like that yesterday. I thought, well, yeah, if we don't win, then fine, we'll pick up points later in the season. But we did win and I just felt so much more calm about the whole thing. Yeah, I think the margin for success in the championship is you want to be in the top two places. Leeds don't win through the playoffs, so you can't yeah. be top six. That's not what you're aiming for. And now we're just aiming for anywhere that's out of the bottom three. Yeah, the top so, 17 would be fine. That's yes, it, yeah. <laughs> no, we need to beat Fulham. Never mind picking up points <laughs> later on. Who are we going to pick up points <laughs> later uh, later on against? Like City or Man City or uh, who are you well, thinking? The other Manchester team are pretty bad. We could beat them easy. Yeah, we, yeah. If we played them yesterday, we'd have gone through them like <laughs> yeah. butter. Yeah. What's the bet in that they're going to pick up form just as we play them? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, without doubt. <laughs> Where everybody's cup final, so. <laughs> so let's go through this then. So the first half, five minutes in, score from a corner. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> Scar from a corner. What's this? <laughs> this isn't Leeds United. This isn't the Leeds United I fell in love with. No. Can we stop um, talking about Matt Heath now? We score from a corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was totally unmarked, wasn't he? <laughs> what a finish, though. What an absolute cracker to get the game going. Who are these strangers in white who score score from a corner and uh, and where have you taken my Leeds United? Well, I think if you leave one of us players that unmarked at the back post and we don't score from it, I'd be a lot more, more pissed off because he was in acres of space. He had about five years to think about it. Yeah. He had a five-year plan for a goal. <laughs> and he executed it. One of my mates is an Arsenal fan. He said last week he'd never seen four defenders chase one ball before. And that's what they were doing in the box. They're all marking the guys in the box and just completely forgot the Costa was just stood yeah. completely unmarked. Yeah, it was very, very similar to the Salah goal. Um, yeah. last week incredibly similar it's off the crossbar that was the only difference I guess that instead of a postage stamp it was a a sweet little kiss on the crossbar first Portuguese player to score in the Premier League for Leeds since oh god uh, <laughs> oh no just um, think one big eyebrow even Bra- Raul Brava Ra- no Bruno <laughs> Ribeiro <laughs> Bruno Ribeiro. I knew it was one of them. Yeah. (laughs) Seems a long time ago, doesn't it? That eyebrow was fantastic. (laughs) Bruno Ribeiro. (laughs) 
<laughs> songs that chants that you'd never thought would make a comeback. So uh, I noticed then after the Costa goal, so um, Cock um, got the ball and he played a lovely little long ball to Bamford, and Bamford was almost in if he yeah. if he'd have um, got his feet right, and then. We he almost scored from a corner as it, it came off his shoulder. He was totally off balance as well. Like he'd, he'd been pushed or something like that, and he was off balance in the in the slow mo. It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then he's he just manages to get a shoulder on it. That would have been a great goal if he went in. Very Thomas Brolin for his first goal. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how they come, just get him in the back of the net. And um, and and then so he'd done these two fairly brilliant things, and then and then he loses his head and s- yeah. slides in. Yeah. So what what do we make of the penalty? I think it was the thing is he's already going down when he slides in, and if there's no contact there, that's no penalty. But because he's he's basically tapped him as he's flying through the air to the floor, that's a pen. Yeah, so it's soft for me, but it is a pen. I can't, I can't argue. With it. You know, the rules say that that's a penalty. So. Yeah, there was contact, and he's gone down. I don't think either of them were penalties, but I've been conditioned to watching championship football for so long that that's it, yeah. you don't get penalties for that sort of stuff. You just get off, get off and go on with it. But yeah, they were both incredibly soft. But yeah, Facebook's already taken against Cock. He's 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 done now. Get get rid of him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> two get, two, two games. games in. Yeah. I was wondering about the weather. Like, I don't remember there there being any snow, but uh, but Brian definitely looked like he was ice skating <laughs> oh, <laughs> into the penalty into the penalty area. He sort of sort of tripped himself up or, or, or staggered. Mm. It was like a stutter, but in 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 running mm. terms. And then he sort of dangles his foot out in the hope that that uh, Cock will will make a contact. And what I noticed about Cock was he did the mushroom. I don't know if you ever did your dolphins, um, but when you learn to swim, <laughs> yeah, you have to make yourself like a mushroom yeah. so you learn to float. Yeah. Just sliding across the box like a little mushroom. But the thing is, it looks like he actually contracts his legs away to not make contact. But then in the end, he's like, oh, no, I do have to kick this guy. And then just like just taps him with his right foot. Yeah. <sighs> He it's looks like, so we... soft, but like you say, the rules are rules, it's a penalty. He looks yeah. so fucking we go again. guilty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the referee like, no, I didn't do anything. Like a dog who's knocked over the fucking the rubbish bin. <laughs> <laughs> well, me? No, it's the bigger boy. I was just boys. excited and my tail knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first saw it, I thought Melier should have saved it. I think on second look, yeah, that might be a bit head. harsh. What what do we think? He seems to dive over it, doesn't he? Yeah, it goes underneath him. So yeah. he's gone the right way. He's guessed the right way. He's just not got down to it quick enough. So he's a big lad. I'll forgive him. Needed to put one of those big hands downstairs and pick it out of the basement. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a shame, but yeah, Mitrovic is. That's anyway. He was going to score off from a header from three yards out. Like I watched Mitrovic most of this game, and he looks like the most unfit player I've ever seen. But yeah, he scored yeah. two goals against us. That's what they're paying the money for. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's like a good version of Lasaga. Got <laughs> <laughs> um, a flat race between those two. Jesus. Yeah, we'd um, still be here now. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Okay, come on, lads. <laughs> then there was a bit of instant karma um, with, with Brian, and he did push uh, Bamford in the back. I think Bamford definitely made the most of it, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely made a meal out of that pot noodle, hasn't he? It's just been like, he's just been, he's getting nowhere near the ball. He's like, yeah. what am I going to do with this? He's felt contact. He's going, oh, I know what happens now. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> straight over. Works. Works. Yeah. yeah, I've been in the Premier League before. I know what to do, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's another one for slow mo yeah. in the Chariots of Fire. Dun, dun, it, yeah. dun, 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 dun. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Again, very soft. I didn't like. I didn't think it was a penalty to begin with, but they get given. So yeah, I'm happy to take them. Yes, yeah, R- ref is broken me back. <laughs> Vicious assault. <laughs> yeah, good penalty from Clickley. Love to see the way that he takes. Spe- speaking so of assault, a uh, proper tangent. But did you see the video of the the Swansea um, oh, coach yeah. <laughs> grabbing that guy by the neck? <laughs> Brilliant. Like, you're going to get away with that. But he was on the floor, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like, get up and square up to the guy. For God's sake. <laughs> Don't take it. Sorry. Tangent again. 
No worries. I think I'd probably... I don't... Yeah, you have to catch me on the right day for a confrontation. Sometimes I can be quite uh, arky. Is that the word? Yeah. Arky? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Not that for a while. No. It's a blast from the past. There you go. Yeah. So that was, penalty, though. Beautiful. <laughs> that was half time, and I don't know about you, but I was, I was not feeling particularly confident at half time. I was thinking we're giving the ball away way too much, and I think I think uh, on LFC day it was like we gave the ball away like 175 times or something. Oof. Jeez. Wow. Was- something seemed off with Calvin yesterday. He didn't seem yeah. his usual player. He was a bit. Kind of all over the place, really. Yeah, they who I think you were marking Anguisa, aren't they? and Anguisa looks a special player. Yeah, then they paid like twenty five million for him. And then yeah, he's, the, he's the, the last time they were up, weren't they? And then he was rubbish for them, went on loan, and now he's come back looking like a player. Yeah, Calvin looked like he'd been out on the piss the night before, mm. and he was a little bit like <laughs> he was still a bit fucking, maybe a little bit hungover, but mostly drunk and just feeling really bad. Yeah, a lot of the midfield did. I think Click didn't look particularly on it as well, and I think it just kind of spread spread across that midfield. I'm not sure kind of what Rodrigo's role was, but not, I don't want to slack him off because he was only thrown to the lineup what twenty five minutes, half an hour before yeah, the game in a position it. That he doesn't play. So, yeah, his second game in a position he doesn't play. Yeah, Probably you can see the there's Larry. something there in a system he doesn't know, and yeah, you are replacing Pablo, who didn't start well against Liverpool, but is our most creative player and pulls the strings from that midfield and yeah it's, it's a big role to take on Roberts looked a lot more natural I think in that role second half yeah yeah he did although after his uh, performance against Hull I've watched mm. the highlights and stuff he looked terrible um, so it's good that he's come back and actually done something better yeah well what he did well was his off the ball work so positionally he knew where to go he knew knew where to close people down and when not to and 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 you know in the in the system that we play, if one goes, you've got to cover there. You've got to cover them. Yeah. So that's why, like, if if like clicks number eight or whatever. So let's say click is is closing a, a midfielder down, and he's left his man that he's he's marking. So then it's Rodrigo's job to go and run and mark that man. So swap mm. with click. So that they're always interchanging like that the whole time, and. Um, so I I watched the game without the commentary, um, right. without the uh, crowd noise, and all I could hear was uh, Bielsa going Rodrigo, <laughs> Rodrigo, <laughs> the whole of the first half. He was very animated yesterday. He barely sat on his bucket, which was a point BT Sport made over and over again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Almost made me wish Don Goodman. Almost. Oh, what replaced Don Goodman with Robbie Savage? Oh, yeah, my word. What, they're both terrible, equally what bad. A job paragon for. of footballing knowledge that guy is. <laughs> I mean, I know he played the game, played at high level, but oh my god, I can't listen to him. No, he is awful. No, no, he doesn't know football, so I don't know why he's a, a summarizer. Mm. Yeah, is it just for the clickbait <laughs> <Yeah>. or <laughs> might be? Yeah, just to create the opinions people will watch and talk about it. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that the guy who was like, they had like a panel. For, it's the first time I've watched BT Sport. Um, but when they went back to the studio, they had a panel of people that looked like they were on the chase. And <laughs> they, were, they were talking to each other and stuff. And the, the announcer, the guy that he had, like the anchor that they had there was just unintelligible. He just spoke so fast. Yeah. So, and then he throws people like Chris Sutton, who is the most miserable bastard I've ever seen on TV. Yeah, What's it. wrong with him? <laughs> BT Sport. I just don't want to be here. shit. <laughs> BT Sport, yeah. it's for kiss it. That needs to be the yeah. first song sung, and then when we get back into stadiums, because it's, it's it. awful. It makes me wish for yeah. Sky. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that right foot finish. Bamford, he, where's is, that uh, come from? Phenomenal. Well, where has that come from? That was beautiful. Bam, 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 yeah. bam, 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 God. <laughs> it's the same as last week that ball through in the first half where he, he was on his right foot and he tried to cut back to his left yeah he did against Liverpool and then this time the second time he gets the chance just hits it with his right and goes in just, yeah just do that Inch first perfect. time Pat every time you wouldn't have said that he were a left footed player with that finish at no. all placed it beautifully in a far corner and that's when I'm thinking ah oh, we're gonna 
And we're going to absolutely hammer him now. And yeah. <laughs> That's what Carlo Ancelotti was saying, wasn't he? He was saying that um, what he taught Calvert Lewin was to take yeah. shots first time. And he mm. he coached Filippo Inzaghi. That's what he said uh, in the, the interview afterwards. And he said, Inzaghi scored 300 goals in his career and 210 were from a first touch. Yeah, just be more, not that be more clinical, but just have a bit more confidence in your right foot because you can score goals with it. Yeah. He scored some good goals with it as well in his Leeds career. And that doubled his total in the Premier League now of goals because yeah. he'd had two before and in two games he's doubled it. So decent. 20 goals, stri- 20 goals season striker in the Premier there League. Go. There we go. He's after at Golden Boot. <laughs> <laughs> and then his assist, for the, his assist for the fourth goal. Yeah. I've never seen him run that fast. No. A step over, which looked a bit gangly to be fair. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't Helder Costa-esque, was it? And then just goes past him like he's not there. And the cutback was inch perfect. Yeah. He sent Odoi for a packet of crisps. <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Costa's finish was superb yeah. again. Patrick Bamford versus Fulham. Here you go, LEFC data. 70 minutes played, 20 touches. 10 of 11 successful passes, three touches in the box, three final third passes, two ball recoveries, one shot on target, one successful take on, one penalty one, one goal and one assist. So we'll move on to the second half and um, there was the click assist for the Bamford goal I've got here. Yeah, great pass. Slide rule, absolute Mm. slide rule pass that. That's um, that's similar to the pass that he got for his goal against Liverpool. Yeah. There just seems to be more space in the Premier League to play these sort yeah. of balls. It's, it's weird. But what I noticed is that we're not creating as many chances as we did last season. If you look at the Liverpool game, I think the big factor there was, um, was Pablo's kind of poor performance. Like every time he got the ball, he did do a misplaced pass and he, where he had... He picked up the ball in good areas and he had the opportunity to create some chances. And for whatever reason, he just wasn't on wasn't on it. And then obviously the game yesterday, he pulls up he pulls up in the warm up with his small issue around the groin yeah. region. Small in- insignificant issue. <laughs> God. As a giant child, that just amused me no end. <laughs> Especially that we were playing in a game where we had both Cock and Ariola. It was just a great day for me all around. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it seems like that number 10 area is a bit of an issue. And it, it feels like Dan, Dan James isn't going isn't gonna to solve that problem. So I feel like maybe DePaul is the answer. Yeah, I think some yeah. Argentinian superstar would be nice. Could you get any more signs that we need to sign DePaul that our 35-year-old, is he 35, Pablo, now, yeah. has pulled up with an insignificant groin injury and missed a whole game? We kind of need backup in that area and we need a succession plan because we can't rely on him to do that like he did last season again, No, especially in the Premier League. So we need to pull the trigger on that, I think. Yes. If you can't, if you can't, don't have any more signs than that, I mean... We're not creating as many chances. Pablo has a bad day. Then clearly we we don't create that as many chances. If Pablo's out injured, then we haven't got a backup number 10 who's a, a clear number 10. Samu Saiz scoring goals for fun against Barcelona <laughs> on the continent. So there's definitely signs there that we need a, a new number 10. Yeah, absolutely. There's no yeah, natural definitely. number 10 in the squad, as in even coming through in the under-23s or anything like that. So there's no prospect of it. There's just, yeah, we need to fill that gap. Yeah, I mean, Alioski came on, kind of played that role, didn't he, towards the end of the game, and he was more just, I'm here to just chase you around at yeah. number 10, just give them no time and space. And I quite like that, but yeah, we can't rely on Alioski and Roberts to do the job of one man. Let's get let's go, just go and get to Paul. Well, I kind of like that, that it's... Uh, you know, we, the the game needs a level head. It needs to be calmed down. <laughs> Who will we bring, bring on? Yeah. But the feral child from Johnny. Macedonia. <laughs> he did good, to be fair. He did all right. Yeah, he looked all right, didn't he? Apart from his, his, his it's, wild shot that he had. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Standard. Yoski. Yes, so we got as far as the, the click assist for the Bamford goal. Click did a kind of... Um, he, he kind of stood on the ball and then did a 360. It was almost like... It was a bit disco, that. There was something Saturday Night Fever about it. Um, 
Then Bamford down the left hand side. I, I think it was Jermaine Jenis who who I'm normally not a big fan of, but he they did the Bamford analysis on match of the day, and he said, "Oh, I didn't know he had it in him." And yeah. well, neither did we, Jermaine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sent a doy for a packet of crisps, and then and two minutes later, I noted that that Dallas sent two of them, two of them back to the yeah. shop because they forgot the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah, Chris Sutton said Fulham Chris Sutton said Fulham were relegated already before the game even started. And I mean if we can't defend, they're all over the place. So it's gonna be a struggle for them. Big time. Yes, it was nice of him to say that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just, just write off a whole team like less than a game in. After one game. So, You're down. Yeah, <laughs> just turn it in now. <laughs> um Yes. And then and then after that, Fulham made a couple of subs which which seemed to make a big, big difference. Um they kept basically kept four players up front they were they were kind of playing a 424 essentially and and so they were um they were man for man on our back line and um and that caused us quite a few problems i mean it caused them a lot of problems at the back as well but it caused us mm. a lot of problems cordoba reed scores and w- what do we think about that goal just had all the time and space didn't he just the, the yeah. defenders just seemed to go missing and it's slightly worrying that our defence looks so solid last year and it can't all have been down to Ben White, surely. I know he's good, but he hasn't. him not being there and someone else taking his place hasn't caused this sort of just chaos in the back four. No, I, I don't think it's it's Ben White. Although we do miss him, I don't think it's that. I think, is this somewhere where Anguissa totally leaves Calvin behind? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, that, that's the point where I knew they were going to score or at least get a really good chance from it because losing your player like that, and then that ball in, yeah, it's we could have defended that better, mm. and then that gives them the impetus to kick on, then, doesn't it? So, so I've actually got some screenshots of that of that goal of both Fulham goals actually. So, um, when you're watching on YouTube, you can see what I'm talking about. But basically, you both said it. Um, the the problem came because we were out of position. Um, Cooper was was too high. If you look at the back line, it's all sort of. Not straight, a sort of three pints in straight, um, and uh, Cooper's Cooper's too high, and and Dallas is too high as well. Dallas is actually not goal side of his man, not goal side of Kadoba Reed, and um, and Cooper is is in two minds about whether to go to Angisa, and that that combination of that left him space in behind. So. Um, four two, and you're thinking, oh no, it's not. We're not safe again. And I felt I started to feel a bit uncomfortable. My spider sense <laughs> was tingling. The the yeah. leads the the le- leads um the leads collapse was tingling. Like <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of leads past just yeah. comes back to haunt us. <laughs> and um. Of course, all of my worst worst fears were confirmed when um, Mitrovic rose like a salmon at the back stick <laughs> <laughs> and powered her a goal. It, it was just a bit of a shambles on it. This one, Melier just seemed to just completely lose where he was. Didn't know whether to come for the cross or stay on his line, and got caught in, in between both. And just yeah, the head just looped over him. Mitrovic is going to score those goals. He's just an absolute bully, and you've got to be a really that sort of defender to battle against him but yeah it's, it's a bit scruffy but I think after they scored that we kind of got back into the game after the, after the, the post as well but we kind of when it got to 4-3 I, I was like I said at the start of the show I think I will, a 4-4 would have been fine with me but we just looked <laughs> we just kind of took a bit more control again after they scored that third which is a bit weird Like it's, this had the makings of the card of 3-3 on it didn't it where I, I started drinking a lot quicker at four three <laughs> than I did at four four. But on that goal, I think there's questions about Melier again. Um, and I've seen it happen three times now. Once for a Van Dyke's goal against Liverpool, there was a yeah. chance uh, yesterday, and then the goal where mm. a cross comes in, he comes off his line, and then comes back onto his line, and he's out of position for to make any sort of a decent hack at the save. Yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, none of the keepers that we've had for the past. Seven seasons have been good at crosses, no. but Melier last season was decent, so I don't know what's changed. There's something tactically there that I don't understand. Surprise, surprise. 
So he's second guessing himself. I think that's what it is because mm. yeah, yeah, when you're when you play by instinct, you you don't have to think about these things. When you start thinking about it, your actions take a lot longer. So he's he's misread the flight of the ball and then and then and he's been thinking, you know, so he's in this two minds of should I go and get it or should I stay back? So yeah. whenever you're in two minds like that and you don't make a decision, and that's that's usually being scared of making a mistake. So it could it's probably just a little bit of a confidence issue with him. But he yeah, yeah. he was halfway. He w- he wasn't one way or, or the other. Um, and the problem for me with this was you've got uh, you've got a good line for our defenders, but it's not necessary in not particularly necessary in this instance because it's a cross, so the ball's always going to go backwards. <laughs> um, but but the problem was that we're all in a line ball watching, and and we just need to keep more of a track of our man because yeah. if Cooper knows where Mitrovic is is then he can 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 go towards him to meet him and block yeah. him off and make that header a lot more difficult. Yeah, it seemed almost a free header that he scored. I think also Bielsa concentrates more on attacking than he does defending, doesn't he? So mm. he's probably just aping grace and he's looked at that season and gone, yeah, bueno. Um, <laughs> so probably need to just defend a little bit better, set pieces. How many times has that done us now? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean across in the set piece, but it's very close to that. Um, but if, if we defend a little bit better and we just tighten up at the back and we score four goals every game, um, I'm booking my <laughs> my tickets to the Champions League final. <laughs> I'm not one of them fans, uh, and I don't think I've actually seen a genuine fan say stuff like that. But yeah, no, we're just outside the European places. Yeah, <laughs> as Barney tweeted, we're three points off the top. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we are we are exceeding our XG. I know you hate that, um, but we're very, yeah. very, very efficient. <laughs> we're extremely efficient yeah. in front of goal at the moment. I mean, if we start creating the amount of chances we created last year and we keep that unbelievable efficiency, then we will definitely be going to the Champions League. <laughs> No <laughs> we've, had, we've had seven shots on target and scored uh, uh, 13 shots on target and scored seven goals yeah and as, as expected goals for the season is 1.67 which shows it's absolutely <laughs> made up complete nonsense yeah um, but I, I did see a Tifa uh, video about a book which was written which looked at all the statistics of um, different styles of formation so basically attacking tactics and defending tactics and it and it found that um and and all the winners of the Bundesliga and the Premier League and it found that attacking style is much more uh, beneficial than a defense than a defensive style so I yeah. think it is yeah. important that we're we're scoring goals. I mean, they say it's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, we've just got to keep it up because we would normally go into a drought, don't we, where we're making loads of chances like we did last season, just not scoring. So I'll take this, you know, it's a happy medium. It's my biggest worry that we wouldn't score many goals this season. Yeah. And we'd have to rely on solid defensive play. And I mean, that's going out the window and we're just smashing <laughs> goals for fun. Yeah. So <laughs> long may it continue. I think it's massive. The, this season, I mean, it's only two games in, but it's uh, I'm ignoring Hull. That doesn't count. Yeah, um, no. It's um, it's not what I expected at all. I expected right. them to be. I expected us to get beat by Liverpool comfortably. I expected this to be a scrappy game. Um, like I said on the Fulham preview, it was, I thought it was going to be two 0 but it was going to be like scrappy, and we were going to get absolutely battered for ninety minutes. And yeah. it's just not that at all. It's expansive. We're playing the game that we want to play with some of the. The moves that we have and some of the play like that, the ball from Click is unreal. It's not what I expected. It's exceeding my expectations so far. So please keep it up. Yeah, Premier League games I've watched in the last sixteen years have been largely just incredibly dull. Two teams yeah. not wanting to lose. And yeah. if we're going to play teams like this, they're going to have to try and attack us because they're going to lose otherwise. So, yep, keep it up. Definitely. And then, um, so after that, we're nearly there. So <laughs> then um, Bamford came off. Alioski came on and I felt like that shored everything up. We sort Imagine of that. packed the midfield <laughs> and we uh, um, 
yeah, we had a little buffer for our defensive line, so we weren't four on four the whole time. Mm. Alioski seems to give everyone like a boost of energy. Like when he's on, everyone else seems to be able to try and up their levels to match him running around. Because Dallas kind of got a second wind, and uh, Click was all over the place again at that point. And th- there were those three were just closing everyone down in midfield. I mean, they created a chance where the, their keeper was all over the place as well. And I think it was Dallas with the final shot or Roberts. Yeah. He just made a smart save from. So, yeah. So, overall, um, 16 years, our first Premier League points. I think now we're in the Premier League. The big, The biggest difference that I've noticed, and probably you guys have noticed as well, is that there's a lot more space in behind teams. So both Fulham and Liverpool were committing lots of men forward and they were attacking us. And that l- left so much space for for our forwards um, and fullbacks to, to exploit. And what you find in scenarios like this is that you will you will score a lot of goals generally, those those players who do, who can. And they tend to look very, very good. So if you think about Zaha at Palace, yeah, they're they're playing on the counter attack. We're not a traditional counter attacking team, but we we counter all the time. Um, and if you look at Griezmann at Atletico Madrid, so they're the they're the two examples that that I would find. And and when you when you took Griezmann to Barcelona, they 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 play much more of a like possession possession based like front foot like attacking in mm. the small spaces um style and he's just not as um effective and and that is my argument for uh no big clubs coming and buying our our players <laughs> <laughs> yeah stay away they won't fit in just leave them where they are but you saw bamford cropping up on the left wing and i think you mentioned it alex um yeah. a few podcasts ago like you would rather have him as the rising salmon on the back stick <laughs> he's just not emulating Lee Chapman enough for me <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was a perfect example because he cropped up on the left wing you know um did a doy and um ended a doy's career and then um and then <laughs> fl- <laughs> crossed it in for um, for Costa who Costa was in the position where your nine or your, traditionally yeah. your nine or ten would be, and and I think your argument would be if they can start finishing anyway, then it's not really going to matter. That's it. Yeah. If if that happens, he's on the left and he puts in a cutback as pinpoint as that, and the winger that you would expect to be putting the cutback in finishes like that. I have zero complaints. Keep it. Just yeah. Bielsa knows better than me. <laughs> The Premier so, League is ma- made for Bielsa football. Yeah. I think I think the reason why we're scoring so many goals and we're so difficult to deal with is because you've got um, Costa popping up on the right, Costa popping up on the left, Bamford on the right, Bamford on the left, Click coming through, um, Harrison all over the place, you know, and, and Alioski just adds to that madness. Yeah. And, and so you've got different players... So different problems to deal with coming up from different spaces and different angles all the time. It, it just yeah. puts them into a kind of um, confused hypnosis. Well, it's like when Sammy said on the uh, the Fulham preview, he said that they've got goals coming from Mitro, but we've got goals coming from all over the place. So you've got to defend against that threat from each each end of the pitch. So Yeah, yeah that's what we were crying out for last season. More goals, not put all the pressure on Bamford to be the goal scorer. Just yep. those wingers and attacking midfielders need to score more, and they are. Okay, so the the press conference then, um, I think it was quite it was quite <laughs> funny for a number of reasons. One little gripe I had about it was um, some of the stupid questions that people yeah. ask that people ask him, like, "Oh, um, Bielsa, when you were four one up, did you were you tempted to just get ten men behind the ball?" You watch Bielsa football, football before. <laughs> Complete nonsense. How do these guys get in that like get in that Zoom chat? We must be able to get our way in there, surely. If these guys are asking those questions, yeah, definitely. We'll, I'll find it. I'll get the link. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't do that to be. So I've got Alex from the Roaring Peacock. Uh, <laughs> is, do you like bees? <laughs> I don't know. Are you a fan of Yorkshire puddings? Or something? <laughs> 
Um, do you want to talk about uh, Chichi Chichigua? I'm saying that right. <laughs> I've fucking butchered <laughs> that, haven't I? Know. I? <laughs> We've just lost his Argentinian audience now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not even Argentinian, is it? I think somebody said it was Colombian and it's used in Mexico. So that's probably what um, slayed Kevin Mephisto, his translator. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's nice to see him giggling at a penis innuendo because then <laughs> at some ways I am on the same level as Bielsa. Yeah. <laughs> Makes him a bit more like us. Yeah. Just when you think he couldn't get any more lovely, he pulls out a small dick jerk. <laughs> <laughs> love him. Absolutely love him. He can never leave. I mean, we've got to like get the uh, singularity sort of brain into a computer thing and just keep him around forever. Yeah. Like something out of future armor or something, head in the jar. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> bueno. <laughs> I like Scott Parker's press conference. That was hilarious because he was a really angry little man. Furious. Talking about red lights going off in their players. Yeah. I don't know what he's I've, on about. I've made a note because this was probably my best bit in the whole press thing. What he said was, uh, for our players, the red bulb doesn't go off. That's it. And, and, we, need, and we need to smell it. It's just mixed <laughs> metaphors all over the place. It smells like a red bulb somewhere. <laughs> Why is he rolling like that? He, he's, I think he's watched them streets edits and he's just thought, right, I'm going to give him more material because yeah. he really likes him. He's, he's leaned into trying, it big time. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to be philosophical in every single interview. He's like, there's a red bulb and we need to smell it. And, you know, there's more to defend. There's more. Stop it, mate. Yeah. Just, just get a better cardigan. <laughs> sort your team out. <laughs> um, it just reminds me of Kill Bill. Um, how when she sees one of her... So one of the people on the list is like, woo, woo, to get a red light on it. Kill Bill. Smell it. Scars. one. I mean, what must his team talks be like? Fucking hell. God. Before he sends them to the pitch. He's got to make sure that whatever away dressing room has got like a, a boombox so he can play the beat. So, <laughs> red light boys. Do is, is the red bulb. <laughs> Go out there. Smell it. <laughs> smell that red bulb. Well, I, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me to do, Scott. Uh, <laughs> the, the the players are there in the tunnel. What did he? What did he just say? Did he say smell it? Smell the smell the <laughs> smell the, the red, red lights. What the red light bulb? What are we doing? <laughs> what, the are we? what the fuck are we doing? We're going to play football. <laughs> Uh, uh, he's going to be the first manager sack this season, almost certainly. Well, that's Sam was saying that when he like during last season, the roundabout is going for his head. Like, let's get rid of him. So I don't think he's far away if if, if they keep going like they're going. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that cardigan, isn't it? Or Bladigan, or whatever <laughs> it's called. <laughs> it's the f- f- that's reason enough. That'd be reason enough for me. Get rid. But what I don't get about that, and I'm not like. A, a sartorial genius in any way present company <laughs> but it's, it's, look at this I'm like, wearing a fucking it's... snood <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so he's that's a bladigan and that's quite a casual thing you'd expect him to wear it around the house maybe yeah but then he t- he ties it with a shirt and a tie and a tie pin it's as mixed as his metaphors yeah. I mean just just go all out wear a suit cool or wear a tracksuit <laughs> don't try and mix casual and yeah, don't take any advice from me anyway because I can't dress. I'll just so. go the other way. Carlo Ancelotti had a nice polo shirt on, but with the suit jacket, he looks smart as yesterday. There you go. Yep. He needs to be on a yacht. Perfect. <laughs> He's trying too hard, Scott. <laughs> just, just chill out a bit. I mean, I have to disagree a little bit there. I wouldn't be wearing that. I wouldn't be caught dead in that blood again. I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't be wearing it around the house. It's got four <laughs> buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is buttoning up four buttons to sit <laughs> around at the house? Head. Jump oh, on. that roast were nice, love. Click, <laughs> click. <laughs> oh, love, where are you yeah, going? Idiot. <laughs> um, getting all dressed up like that. I'm just going to the the living room. I'm gonna watch some <laughs> games. It's a bit of telly. I'm, I'm retiring to the smoking room. It's the, <laughs> it's the living room, mate. You're just gonna watch Sky Sports again. <laughs> on, honestly, I, I think that's. I mean, you imagine, you imagine what it takes to like. To like button those four buttons. I mean, that's a fucking psychopath right there. He's sitting on the couch. 
put a tracksuit on. Yeah, I mean, if he did a, a time and an efficiency study, like how long it's taken him to get ready to do them far buttons, when really he could just put a polo shirt on. Yeah. You know, that just shows that he's he's disorganized in his team as well, because his formation of his button is quite quite tight, but his defence, not so much. <laughs> and so your life out, Scott Parker. <laughs> he's talking about red lights <laughs> going off. That first corner, about f- four of them. Yeah. I could see the red lights from here. Four of them. Yeah. Go l- losing their shit panic stations. Ah, we need to get it. One of them is so scared. He's turned away from the ball. It's hit him on the head, and that's that's what uh, <laughs> that's how it got to Costa. Well, the, the only red light that Scott Parker's aware of is the one that flashes when he's shoplifting another set of blasters from Savile <laughs> Brothers. Hey, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. I- <laughs> Speaking of allegedly, did you see Patrice Evra? Um, yeah, <laughs> totally drops Zaha in it for apparently sleeping with Moise's daughter. Yeah, Kelly Kate's bless her, tried her hardest, didn't she, to cover that up. Move on, move on. He looks like a voodoo doll. Did you ever think about that? Zaha. <laughs> what? <laughs> Straight up, it reminds me of a voodoo that's, doll. That's, that's never, never crossed never my mind. I'm going to have to take another look at Wilfred Zaha. Yeah. Look at him, bulging is eyes. It, is it? Voodoo doll, if ever I've seen please, him. please don't stick pins in him. He's the, yeah, he's... Yeah, you, oh my God. You better watch out if you see him at the acupuncture. Run, <laughs> fucking run. Yeah, I've never done that. I don't think I could do acupuncture. Ooh, no, I think God it's me. just, it's the shape of his skull. It's like, he's got very thin skin um, and and it, it goes around, he's, he's got a very shapely skull and these bulging eyes. So it makes me always think of a, um, a voodoo doll. <laughs> Got into a really weird place on this podcast. Yeah, I think it's time to end this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) That's the image when we we play Palace, though. (laughs) (laughs) You mean this particular podcast or just the podcast in general is a failed (laughs) failed idea? Just this one for now. We need to. Okay, I think that was all my notes. I, th- I feel like there's something missing because Liver- probably the Liverpool one was was such a, an epic, and and now I'm yeah. like, oh, was that it? That's just a, it's just a standard run of the mill four three. But I think um, when the game finished and it, it was the close up on Bielsa, which they do at the at the final whistle every time, he looked annoyed, shaking yeah. his head. He wasn't happy at all. So I think there's going to be. I think it was Bamford that said in his post match that there's going to be meetings this week. So, yeah, hopefully they'll get it sorted. And it's um, Sheffield United next, isn't it? On to Sheffield next Sunday, yeah. 12 o'clock kickoff. On yeah. BT I'm, Sport. I mean, pretty soon after the final whistle, I feel like Rodrigo started off around the running track. He's probably still there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. He's going to come back with a face like a voodoo doll if he keeps going. <laughs> uh, you're going you're gonna to use every opportunity to bring that up now. You should never have said it. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Google search voodoo doll and you'll see what I mean. Insignificant mentionables. Um, there was a Phillips <laughs> flop, which I, I quite liked. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a brilliant block and header by Cooper. Uh, I've wrote here, wayward passes from KP put us in danger. And then I immediately got extreme guilt for for criticizing <laughs> KP, for criticizing the um, prodigal prodigal son. The prince who was promised. The fresh prince of Thorpe Arch who was promised. And uh, <laughs> He's allowed I, to have a bad game. And I wrote, don't expect perfection, but simple passes come from composure. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair though. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't at the races yesterday. He wasn't his usual self. Um, but... Th- it's, I think in, against Liverpool, they were fantastic and he showed exactly where his strengths are and it's just dropped off a little bit yesterday. So I, I don't know if it could have been, because like he said in interviews before, his first pass that he looks for is Pablo. Yeah. So if they've drilled that and that's the lineup, and then, you know, less than an hour before kickoff, it gets changed. It could be partly that, that he's a bit out of sorts. But I'm, I'm sure we'll see because it was an insignificant small injury. So we should see him back for Sheffield. Yeah, insignificant small um, issue in the groin region. <laughs> yeah. um, Problem that has plagued me for most of my life. <laughs> uh, um, and Ailing tried a flop, which failed. Ref didn't buy it. Didn't work, yeah. 
Didn't work, he did he? He was human, it? that. He was yeah. not happy. We found out, lads. Yeah, the wrong spot. Shit. Maybe, maybe um, whoever it was shouldn't have set up that account called the the ailing flop predictor. The ailing flop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, our passes just looked a bit slow at the back, and and I feel like we're still in a little bit of um, preseason mode. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels like preseason. Even the whole game, I've in my head, I've rationalised that as a preseason game. Yeah. Because I don't think we're, re- I don't think any team's ready in this division. Hopefully, we'll see as as solidify. But if we're scoring like this, in, we've never scored like this in preseason previously. So something's going right. But yeah, Alex, I I realised something that the small Colombian um, Cockney, he already <laughs> has a small face. It's like he does, just, yeah. <laughs> it's like God or, or whatever the universe or whatever. Let's not get into religion. But whoever it is that has made this small Colombian cockney, they've they've made them in the image of your small face memes. Ah, uh, yeah, they're just saving me a job. I, I might still do it anyway, just see how micro face we can go <laughs> with that guy. Yes. Yeah. Just imagine the Jack Nicholson agree meme. <laughs> Make his face even smaller, Alex. Do it. Yep. On it. On it. <laughs> right then. So, uh, Ross, final thoughts? Well, I look forward to more of this all the way through the season, but hopefully I'll take a nice, comfortable 1-0 win next Sunday in Sheffield uh, United. That'd be much better for everyone's hearts, I think, because a lot of old Leeds fans that probably can't take much more of this. Okay, and Alex, final thoughts? Um, I think I've got to agree with a guy on Twitter, really, who said that um, Ian Holloway in Blackpool is a very similar scenario to where we've been and we need to be really careful of that because that didn't work out very well. It's a, a really good comparable. What an idiot. What yeah. an absolute idiot. Yeah, that's my final thought. There's a lot of idiots on Twitter who've only watched the Premier League. Yeah. And final thoughts from me are, um, I find Scott Parker's motives very questionable of turning Fulham into a, a sort of red light district, if you will. <laughs> 175 possession loss so that's missed passes or, or or being tackled i think that's too many seven goals in two games is also too many to concede if we keep doing that i doubt our ability to score enough to to get the points that we need but i do feel like if we did have ben white we wouldn't have we would never have conceded seven goals in two games. But another blockbuster performance. We can't keep doing four threes every week. That's going to um have a serious impact on the the health of the fan base, which needs to be a serious consideration, especially during these times. Wherever you are, stay well and good, and we'll be back with you on Wednesday. If you like to follow people, but not in real life, not you, not those people. <laughs> Um, you can check out our social media channels and you'll probably be disappointed. Thanks very much. That was our match review. We'll see you Wednesday. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. You should probably give them a follow as they're more interesting than us. A very special thanks to Adam Elliott, Adam Warner, Barney Stewart, Cookie Ed McIntyre, Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon, Nige and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's on your mind.